Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we're going to look at how to download Visual Studio 2017, the community version, which is the free version. And with that, you will be able to start pro pro oh, programming with Visual Basic. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this lesson's all about how to download Visual Studio Community for Visual Basic. That's what we're really going to try and get to use to do some programming and learning. Okay, so the first thing to do is like you just get into Google search and you do a search on Visual Studio as shown here. And that will take you to the main um, Microsoft Visual Studio web page. All right, now they keep changing it, but at the moment I just checked it before and it does still look like this. Uh, the picture on the front may change, but the main thing is um, not to use the ones which are shown on the front screen, but to go up the top to where it says downloads and make sure you click onto downloads. And then for the downloads page, it will look like this and you need to pick the community one. Okay, the community one is the free one. The professional and enterprise are actually quite expensive, like could be thousands of dollars. So don't pick them at all. We're just doing community that's for students and for teachers, for people that just want to learn how to start programming in Visual Studio. Okay, now it has a two part process. First you do is um, get a installer that's what that first download does when you click on the website to get the community so that will download very quickly and you need to then click the save button or you can click the run button actually uh, anything to start running that installer okay now when you do that as shown down the bottom here in the right hand side you will see uh, visual studio installer so you just click continue at that step Okay, now what will happen is there'll be a short period of time when it's going to uh, download the installer program. The install program's not that big. So it's going to download it and install that onto your machine and then it'll start running. Now, when it starts running, this is a stage where you choose which Visual Studio components you are going to install. Okay, and there's also as shown here with the arrow, there's a scroll bar with more options of things to install as well. Now, for Visual Basic, which is what we're learning using just to learn programming because it's simple. Look, you don't get jobs working as a Visual Basic programmer. That's usually C++ or C Sharp. But those languages are too hard to learn straight up and you're better off learning Visual Basic first. Okay, so you get the .NET desktop environment. And that's going to give you Visual Basic, okay, that we're going to be using in our programming course, which we're making here on YouTube. Uh, and you need to tick also Universal Windows Platform Development. You can tick the C++ as well, just get that. At some stage, we might show you a little C++ uh, program in our course, just so you can see what it does. And we also got the Python development one here. We ticked that. But um, that isn't kind of like Python that you can run in the console and that it's other Python for web. So probably just uh, use Python Room, the online app, or I don't know, you can get this anyway. But uh, they're the main three things which uh, we selected. And then if you use that scroll bar at the side here to go down, there's other things as well, like you can hook uh, studio up to unity and do some game development but look if you don't get all of these now or you've missed getting one it's okay because later on after it's installed there's a modify option to go back and remove um, studio elements or add new ones in so after the installs finished you'll have as well as visual studio 2017 shown here on the left you will also have the video studio installer and you can start that up at any time and you click on modify and then you can uh, tick and untick various elements and get new things or remove things which you installed okay so what we do is we've ticked just our four things that we want it tells us it's going to be 17.83 gigabytes down here in the corner 
uh, and we install it. So don't tick everything because it's going to download way too many gigabytes and take ages to do. We just want these ones so we can basically get started with Visual Basic. Okay, so you click install and what happens is that starts the install process. Now um, that took quite a while on our machine, even though we were using a 4G network, perhaps it was busy on a weekend, uh, not sure, but it did take quite a while. Uh, so be prepared for that. And down here, it's also got Visual Studio Enterprise and Visual Studio Professional saying they're available. Do not click to install those at all. They cost thousands of dollars. You just want the Visual Studio community, uh, which is the free one, okay, that Microsoft gives people so they can learn how to do some programming. Thank you, Microsoft. That's very nice of you. All right, so step eight, you have to wait for that download to complete. So uh, that ran rather slowly, as we said, and it took us about 20 minutes. So you might have to wait up to an hour, depending on your connection. Like, I don't know, it could take anywhere between 10 minutes or maybe an hour for that download to complete. And then once you've got that download completed, you need to restart your computer, okay? So it'll give you a message, reboot required. Just click on the restart. Close down any applications you've got open, like your web browser and things like that. And then just click that restart to restart your machine. Once your machine restarts, you will have Visual Studio 2017 and the installer we talked about, which is where you could change some options if you need to. So if you just go to start a program as usual with the left hand corner icon and hit the letter V on your keyboard, it'll take you down to your V things and you've got Visual Studio 2017. So you click on that. Now, it'll ask you to sign in to your Microsoft account or Office 365. So we've got that. So we just clicked sign in on that and we were able to sign in to our account and set the development settings that we wanted to do most of our programs in Visual Basic. So that's just when it starts up, it'll be Visual Basic ready. Uh, it's not going to stop you from doing other programs. You can pick other new projects in different languages, but this just uh, defaults your start position when you start up Visual Studio. And we just chose color theme blue, uh, just because we wanted that better for print screens in PowerPoints and things like that. There is the dark option, which gives you that kind of modern, um, like we've got here, a kind of a dark gray screen with white writing on it, if you want that. And But you can always go and change that setting later once you're in Visual Studio, so you're not locked in forever with whatever you pick on this screen. And then just click the Start Visual Studio button down the bottom right-hand corner of that pop-up box. Okay, and then we start using Visual Studio for Visual Basic. Now, we're going to write a Hello World program, but perhaps rather than going through these slides, we'll actually do it in Visual Studio. But let's just show you here. Uh, once we get in, we'll be doing File, New Project. We're going to be picking a certain type of Windows Form project to use. We're going to be naming our program. Uh, we're going to then be uh, having Visual Basic open for us, the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment, like on this screen showed here. And straight away you need to do File and Save All on your project. And we'll find somewhere to save it and we'll put it in there by browsing to the right folder that we want, select the folder, put it in there and save it. So that's a kind of strange thing. It's not like a PowerPoint where you know you work on it for a while and you save it. With a Visual Basic project, you need to save it up front at the beginning because it makes a whole lot of um, different project files and things. It's not just kind of one output Word doc file or one output PowerPoint file. When you do a Visual Studio project, a Visual Basic project, it makes a lot of different output folders and files. So do a save all to save the whole lot and set up that structure of files uh, first thing. Okay, now on this Hello World program, we're gonna have a picture box, we're gonna have a text box where people can enter their name. When they click a start button on the screen, it's going to just pop up a nice little welcome message uh, for them. So look, there's the code that we're going to be writing and we'll do a little test run of the program, see that it works. We'll do a save all. We'll show you how it's generated an, an application exe file that we can run uh, standalone. So we don't even need Visual Studio going to do that. And that will be the end of the presentation. So anyway, let's get into it and start up Visual Studio. So we start 
And there's all our programs. Press the letter V. That will take us down to uh, not Visual Studio in this case. Okay, let's uh, just try that again. So we're doing start. Uh, let's just scroll down to where the V's are. All right, so we've got v, Visual Studio 2017. So that's the one we want to start up. Now, if you're going to be using it a lot, like um, just right click and say pin to start. Uh, ours is already pinned to the start if you look over here on the screen, around the bottom in the middle. Uh, but yeah, just get it pinned onto your start, then you can get to it straight away. Uh, but anyway, let's just launch it from here. So we just double click and Visual Studio 2017 is going to start up and here's Visual Studio 2017. Now we can go file and we need to start a new project. Okay, now because we picked Visual Basic way back when we logged in with our Office 365 and installed, it sort of brought up the Visual Basic thing straight away. Uh, if that's not happening for you, like it might be here in some other language like Visual C Sharp or JavaScript and have all these other things, you just need here to click on Visual Basic and we want the Windows desktop type apps. So you click on that and we actually want the second one down, a Windows form app. OK, now at this stage, most people jump down and click OK here, but you don't want to do that. Otherwise, all your programs will be called Windows App 1, which isn't going to make it easy to find them later on. So we're just going to call this the Hello World first program because I think we've already got one called hello world sitting out there but anyway I'll just call it hello world first program for the name here and then we click OK now what's going to happen there is in a minute just setting some things up and we've got our form our screen form here in the middle We've got a toolbox of objects we can add onto the form down the side and we've got our solution explorer here now sometimes the toolbox isn't there like if it's closed down it'll be closed down like that and you will need to go to view and toolbox to get it back again showing now once it's showing here in the side toolbox you're best using this drawing pin here next to the X just click on that and that just pins it in the corner right so everything can be seen straight away like the tools down the side if you're using Photoshop or something like that and it just makes it easier and you've still got plenty of room around here to do your work okay so on the form uh, the first thing we're adding is a thing called a label so Oh, that's another thing this if this is closed up and you've got common controls or if everything's closed like this and you can't see anything uh, just click on all windows forms that kind of gives you everything that's available all the objects and they're in alphabetical order so the first one we need is a label so we click on label and we just drag it out onto the screen and at the moment the writing in the label is really small where it says label one so we go to um our properties down here in the right hand side just make sure they're alphabetical a to z is how you want them is the best one with this a to z and if we go down we can change the text in that okay so we change the text and this text is just going to say hello world program and when you press enter that's going to go on the screen now if you need more room to write you can click that arrow and see how it's giving this box down the right hand side there you can just start uh, type things into there if you're sort of all cr scrammed up in the uh, properties there and so you can see on our screen when we clicked off it and pressed enter we've got this thing hello world program but it's kind of way too small so if we click on it and go back to our properties see how here how it's got the font if we click on the triple dots, which is the ellipsis or expression builder on font, we just call it this triple dots little icon here, this little square. Uh, then it's going to bring up more familiar types of things like you've seen in Word and other Microsoft applications. So this is a nice thing about Visual Studio and Visual Basic. It's a Microsoft uh, product. So you've got kind of some ribbon type things and other things which are a bit familiar. Okay, so we've just made that 18 so it's nice and big and let's just put that there. Now the other thing we needed was another label. Okay, so we go down our label tools again, click in here and this label is going to say down in its text property, uh, we're just going to ask people to enter their name. So it's just going to say enter your name. Okay, 
And again, it's a little bit small. So let's just go up to font here and make it a bit bigger. So let's go for, let's say 12, perhaps into your name. Okay, that's nice. Uh, now what we need next is a uh, text box that they can actually type their name into. So the next object we're adding onto our form is down in the T's and it's this one called text box. So you just drag it out onto the form and that'll put a text box there. We can stretch it on the end and make it a bit longer. Now, again, the font's gonna be for some reason, they start off with this 7.8, which is way too small. So click on your triple dots next to the font property there and we'll just put that up to 12, okay? So any writing we type in there will be 12. Uh, now, at this stage, we could just even test the program. So to run a program at any time, even though this one doesn't have any code, it's just got objects on the form. There's a green arrow up the top here, start. So we'll just click on start and see what happens. So we've clicked on start and it just takes a minute to uh, sort of organize everything. And you can see here, we've got a pop-up window box that we can move around, all right? And it said, hello world program, enter your name. And we could probably just type our name in here if we wanted to, and that's all good. So press enter. So that's all working and you can backspace in it and rub out and all that sort of stuff. So that's good, that's okay so far. Now see how it's got form one in the top left-hand corner here? If you don't like that, um, just click here in this sort of uh, light blue area and then you'll be on the form go to its properties but just be careful don't change the name of it here it needs to stay as form one at the moment you just go down and change the text on this guy so where it says form one let's just put call it hello program so this is our hello program and you can see up the top left hand corner next to the sort of visual basic icon there it's got hello program all right now what we need next is just another text box where we're going to put a message into now we could just click on this one that's already on the form and do our old control and c on the keyboard and control and v so we're just doing copy paste uh, i think you can also just right click and go um copy and then just get down in the blue area and go paste that'll do the same thing let's just press the delete key to get rid of that one uh so this is going to be where our message is going to be and it's going to say hello uh our name welcome to visual studio and we're also going to have a picture on our form but first let's before we do that let's do the button so the other object is a button so we go to the b's on our all windows forms here button drag that out and the button again the font is way too small 7.8 7.8 is not great we need something like 12 so let's just up the size of that uh, get it a bit bigger like that and down in its text we're going to uh, just have that say start that's going to be our start button that we click to make everything start going now with this up the very top where it's got its name it's called button one now we're just going to follow some conventions here if you've watched our video on uh, naming conventions you'd know that hungarian that should be called btn and we're just going to call that btn start so that's the object's name btn start okay these things are labels they're not going to interact at all or change in the program. So we're not going to name those. Uh, this text box, we should name that. This is the TXT is the Hungarian notation for text box. This is going to be TXT input, uh, input name. That's the name they've put in, in that text box. And this second text box, we're just going to call TXT output msg for message okay so we've named those objects so we've got this one's called txt input name if you look down the property sheet this one is txt output message msg this one is btn start and we need to uh, remember that for the program now we're also going to have a picture box with a picture in it just for a bit of fun uh, now we don't need this to have a special name we can just leave it as its name picture box one let's just stretch it and make it a bit bigger and we've got a picture that we're going to put into it so see how there's a little arrow here in the right hand corner you just click on that arrow and then you can get to choose image so we'll choose image and we're going to import the image so we import 
and we go to our folder and we've got this little meme we found on the internet so we're going to open that now you can see the picture doesn't fit in the box it's way too big for the box so if we click on that and go to the prop oh sorry we need to say okay all right and now you can see it's way too big for the box so on that little arrow if you click on it again it's got a thing called size mode and we need to like put the size mode up to stretch image and that'll stretch the image out so it fits us in the box so uh, we just that's something you need to know about picture boxes now we want this picture box to sort of not appear when the program runs uh, at the moment if we press start and try out the program our first Visual Basic program, uh, you can see it shows the picture first up. Now, we actually don't want uh, this text box to show or the picture to show. We want those two things to appear after we've clicked the Start button. So we're just going to do a couple of things here. On the picture box, click on it and way down the properties uh, here, it's got a property called Visible and you set Visible to False. And what that'll do is it makes it disappear when you run the program. So when you run the program, see how it's not visible and we can't actually see it there. So that's made that invisible. And we need to make this text box here too. We'll make that visible false as well. Okay, so we're setting our text output message box to visible false as well. So that if we click start up the top and run it, um, yeah, those two things won't be there at the moment. Now, if your program ever gets stuck and things are going wrong, up near where you click start, there's a red stop button. So you can just hit that stop button. So if this is all jammed up and something's not working properly, just remember the stop button's kind of like your shutdown button, emergency shutdown. So we can just use stop to stop whatever's happening there. Uh, right, so now we need to do some coding. So let's double click the start button which will take us into a, another window. And you're going, oh no, where's my form gone? I've lost my form. Well, your form is up here in form 1.vb design. And if you look over in your solution explorer, it's also here as well. So if you accidentally shut that down somehow, or you've lost your form or you've lost everything, just double click on form 1.vb here in the solution explorer and that should bring it all back, okay? Uh, we might just do a save all at the moment. There's a little icon here with two disks, two drives. That's the save all icon. Or you can do file and save all. So let's just do a save all to save everything we've done so far. And yeah, we were supposed to do this at the start, I think. But anyway, we better browse to somewhere to save it to. Uh, so this is in the download Visual Studio lesson. So let's just put it into... Uh, just there so we'll just actually we'll just use the download visual studio folder and select that folder that's where it's going to go it's called hello world first program and we save it okay the project cannot be saved because another project already exists in there called hello first program choose another program and another location oh, okay so we did save it already at the start Okay, we'll assume it's saved. All right, let's double click on start here and go into the program and start programming. So when we double click start, that's the code for the start button. But before we do that, we need to uh, dimension a couple of variables. So we're going to have a, a variable. We're going to put dim and we're going to put string because it's a string variable name and we're just going to dimension that as a string type of variable. So again, if you've watched or you need to have watched our naming conventions and data types uh, so we're just going to dim our string name as string that's an internal uh, name we're going to be using in the program and we're also going to dimension a thing called uh, string it's a string type and this is going to be the output message that we're going to build so output uh, msg let's just call output message maybe um, output message so we'll dimension those two so okay when they click the start button what we need to do is we need to um, we've got their name and we've got this picture box is invisible at the moment and so is our text box text output message so in the program uh, what we're going to do is We'll do some stuff to make a message, but then we'll need to make sure that we go txt 
and see how it's got output message we can just double click on that one to select it so the property we want is the actual text which is in that box uh, no sorry we want the property that is the visible so if we start, start typing viz it'll come down to visible and you can double click on that it's kind of got this code helper and we're going to set that to true so that will make that uh, text box show up on the screen and we also need our picture box to show up now so if we start typing picture see it finds picture box one that's our guy so we double click on that and we want its visible property here to become true so that it will show up on the form okay so actually let's just stop and test our program at that stage so if we click the start button what should happen is our program will run and if we click start see the picture box is appearing and so is the message box there for the output so that's good that's all working good now we need to just format what's going into that string output message so we use our internal program variable we've defined up the top there string output message and what that's going to equal is in quotes it's going to say hello and then we need a space and we want it to say hello to the person's name that they've put in so we need to get their name and we don't have their name at the moment but anyway let's just it's going to be in string name so it's going to join up hello and string name and then we want to join up another part of the sentence so we use an and symbol not a plus symbol a plus symbol is used for adding up numbers this is for adding up words to each other so when we make a sentence we just add a whole bunch of words together and that's what we're doing here so we're going to say hello that'll be the person's name that they've typed in and we'll have some quotes here and we'll say welcome to visual 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 basic 2017 okay so we'll have that as a message now uh, let's just try that out at this stage run it and see what happens so we put our name in so our name is say Peter and we do start now it hasn't put anything into that text box so nothing's working yet okay we've sort of formed inside the program the message we want but we need to put that message into uh, the output text box so remember this guy here on the form uh, the name of that is text output message so I might even be lazy and just go into there and highlight it and do control whoops do control C just to highlight that so if we double click our start button to go back in the program we need to uh, take this now that we've made it and we need to do text output message on the box the text box and we want the text property of that we need to set that equal to str output message so that's inside the program we've uh, made this message go become all together but we can't see it when it runs because we haven't put it into that text output message box this guy here that we've got on the screen okay so we need program code that's going to do that all right so let's give it a run and see what happens so we click on the green arrow there and we type in our name which is peter parker uh, with a capital p and click start and it says hello welcome to visual basic 2017 but it didn't put our name in it didn't like put peter parker that name so something's not quite right but we're nearly nearly there uh, what we need to do is uh, when we click the start button the text box that they've typed their name into uh, we need to get that information out and put it into this string name variable we've got in our program this str name so we just say this str name in the program is going to be equal to whatever they put into that text box text box text input name so we double click on that so that should bring and you need the text property of that okay this is something people always forget and you'll see the red underlined squiggle if it's not right so we need to have text there okay so this is going to go to the form and whatever is in that text input name text box which is this first box and if we go in the properties down here and check its name 
it's text input name. So whatever we've typed into text input name, this bit of program code is going to take that and it's going to put it into our str name variable that's inside the program. Then when we format this output message, it should have the person's name in here that they typed in and make that as part of the output message. Then we need to remember we've got to move that output message which is totally internal to the program and hidden inside computer memory. We've got to move that out onto the form. So we've got to put it into text output dot message text. Okay, so we need to put it into there. Then we need to make that message box visible as well as making the picture box visible. So that should be our finished Hello World program. So let's try it out. So my name is uh, Spider-Man. So we're kind of in a Spider-Man mood today. And if I click start, it says, hello, Spider-Man. Welcome to Visual Basic 2017. Now, we just don't have a space between Spider-Man and welcome. So we need to just go into our program and check that out. So where we've got welcome, we need to just put a space in there. And back on our form, perhaps we'll just make both of these just a little bit longer in case someone types a bit of a longer name in. Uh, so let's start it and run it. And let's put our name in. So our name is um, Paul Passy. And we click start. Hello, Paul Passy with a space. Welcome to Visual Basic 2017. And our nice little meme appears. Uh, so that's our program finished. So we can go file, save all to save that. And once it's saved, we'll just show you quickly um, the structure that's happened here. So this was our Hello World first program. So if we click in that folder, so we're just in normal Windows folders at the moment. And that's the actual Visual Basic Visual Studio solution, Visual Basic solution file. So if we were coming in, uh, we'd already closed this and finished work, but we wanted to go back and work on it the next day. We'd click this one, double click it. It'll open up Visual Studio and get everything uh, open as it was for you. Uh, but if we go to Hello World First Program, just keep navigating through these top level files. So we go to the bin, the binary file, uh, double click on that. And then we go to the debug file here. And up the top here, it's got a file that's a type application. Now, this is the standalone actual application that's being built. And we can double click that and that'll run our program. So we can have this like on a USB stick. Visual Studio is not even loaded up on another computer we're on and just run this executable application that's being generated. We can put in there, uh, who are we? We're Bruce Wayne. And we click start. Hello, Bruce Wayne. Welcome to Visual Studio. Whoops, got a little bit chopped off. Uh, Hello world, I'm a programmer meme. Okay, so you can see here there's quite a bit of a folder structure involved and don't ever go like renaming any of these folders or moving any of these things around because that will mess up your whole project. So it's quite a complex thing when it builds a um, Visual Studio project. Okay, so let's just say uh, we finish with this. So we go file and we go close project. And this has turned out to be a bit of a long video, but it is the first program. We want to try and get you off to a good start with programming. So let's say Visual Studio, we'd close that down and we thought, oh, we want to go back and work on that Hello World program. We want to add some more stuff to it. Because uh, remember, oh, Bruce Wayne, the thing got cut off at the end and stuff. Just go to the folder where it is and click down in there and when you get to this hello world first program sln if you double click that that will launch visual studio take you into the program where you left off and you can make some changes okay now sometimes what happens is it takes you in and it's just screen looks like this and you go oh no where's my stuff my program's ruined all my beautiful work uh, you just need to go to solution explorer and uh, click on form one VB. Also notice another thing before we do that over in the toolbox, you'll also be looking at that going, no, I haven't got any tools to do anything either. Like no program, no tools. What happened? Everything's a disaster. It isn't just click on form one VB here in the solution explorer. That'll reopen your form. Then all the tools come for doing things on your form. And 
we need to kind of make a bit more space. So if you hold down shift and you click on all of these guys here, shift, holding down shift on your keyboard with one hand and clicking those with your mouse, we can now use our left arrow key. So we're just gonna move all of those over to the left hand side a bit because uh, we didn't have room when Bruce Wayne, Batman wanted to uh, get started with Visual Basic. So we'll just make both of those text boxes a little bit longer and we'll just give it a quick test. I know this has taken a lot of time. I'm sorry about that. Uh, just give it a quick test here. So if your name is Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne, his name is Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Okay, now it all fits in all right. And Bruce Wayne has an extra N in his name, but it doesn't do spell check. Okay, and you can close that down. All right, so uh, we hope you enjoyed that. And let's just go back to our slideshow. Okay, so that was the first uh, programming lesson in Visual Basic, and we're going to be making a whole lot more of these uh, so you guys can learn to program. Because Visual Basic, although not used in the commercial world, you're not going to be able to make programs and sell them to anyone or put them in the um, Apple shop or anything like that. It's a great language for just learning the concepts of programming. And once you know the concepts, then you can go to another language that's more complicated and at least you kind of know what you want to do. It's a bit like learning a language like German or something, you know, like you kind of know in English what you want to say, but you just have to work out what the German is. So by learning Visual Basic, uh, you'll know what you kind of want to do in a program. And then when you go to a different language, you just need to sort of think, hmm, I'll just have to Google and go to Stack Overflow and things and find out how we do it in this different language. Okay, so we think that's the best way to learn. So anyway, subscribe to our channel. We will be putting out videos, well, at least every week is what we're aiming for on uh, programming and other things and then you won't miss out and you can continue with our learning course so thank you for watching